hearing them. What uh, what made that fight tonight? So what was the mindset then? Like between rounds, I mean, were you were you a little down on yourself? I mean, what 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 was the mindset? And what did you have to adjust? Yeah, I knew I lost the first round, and going into the corner, it's hard not to be defeated, knowing that you're you know losing and down on the score scorecards. But I know I was never in danger during that entire round. It was um, there was no positions where it felt like I was being threatened, and I kind of told myself, hey, I need to turn it up. It's it's time to turn it up. I, I was able to land a really clean head kick in the first round and trying to use that striking again, but she was able to uh, set up that takedown really well. Um, luckily, I was able to see my coaches no. exactly what I need to do to finish uh, in that second round. It's like finish. I mean, is that something that, that you drill on that, or is that, you know... <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, I am pretty good at getting slick uh, submissions where people don't see it. You know, I was actually really deep on the heel hook, and uh, I feel like if it was a guy, I would have finished it. But women are very flexible, only because women are very flexible. So she was able to work her way out of it. Um, so I, I hope that I can continue to have these, you know, amazing submissions, but hopefully, actually, be winning the rounds before I get them. Can you talk about what this whole experience was like for you? Because I mean, not that you're the bad guy, right? But I mean, you know what she went through. You know that there were people that were just pulling for like this fairy tale ending. But you got to worry about your own career, right? Not about her story. So I mean, has this been tough on you to be on the on the other side of this fight? No, not at all. You know, I went into it, of course, when I heard her story. My managers called me, and I was kind of one of the first ones to know. Luckily, our managers are really good friends with her, so they kind of told us what happened and why she had to pull out of the fight. And I just felt so sorry for her. I, I luckily, you know, haven't had to go through anything even close to that, but it's uh, something that she's going to continue to deal with for the rest of her life, and it's, it's traumatizing and awful. But the fact that she was able to even show up tonight is a huge triumph and a success. So, um, you know, all prayer, I'm going to be praying for her and her family and, you know, for her arm. I, I know it's, I don't know what, what exactly happened with the armor, but, um, you know, I, I had a long road to recovery and, and it's really hard, but, you know, hopefully she can focus on some family time right now. Yeah, so last thing for me, uh, you know, now you're back, you're healthy, and you seem to be in, in good spirits right now, so what's next? I mean, do you feel like you need to make up for lost time? Are there opponents? Are there dates? Are there cars? What's what's the plan? Gosh, for me, what's next? My husband fights next in Bellator, so we're getting... How active are you looking to be this year? Uh, as active as I can, you know. Uh, I was excited to kick off with the first, you know, big win for my team, Gracie Baja Portland. Our next teammate fighting is Ricky Simone, who fights a top uh, 15 ranked guy here in the UFC, so he's next. And then I'm excited just to see what the UFC offers me. What do you make of uh, the fighting division? It's up there for basically getting the next job because it doesn't seem like there's a clear contender right now. No, I don't think there is a clear contender. It's a brand new division, and I feel like we need to see a lot more fights happen before we can see who is the top five, the top ten. And it took a while for the Charlotte division for that to happen. And I'm just excited. I want to see who is ranked in the top 15 right now and hopefully work my way up to a title shot. You know, I think I have a lot, a long journey to go, but I'm going to listen to my coaches and the UFC and whoever they offer me is going to see what I take next. When you say a long journey, you think you have like plenty of fights left before fighting for a title? Because I mean, you have a big name, and this is a pretty brand new position. So. I, I feel like when I was in the Charlotte division, I did rush myself to get to a title shot. I was rushing, I was chasing for a belt. I feel right right now, I need to enjoy the process a little. I'm 24, and I hate when people are like, oh, you're so young. But it's absolutely true. I am so young. I might as well wait, develop my talent, and work my way up the division, and then really claim my title shot when I deserve it. And is, is that something that will come with time, and then you'll find out, or do you have, you know, perhaps like a certain amount of fights you would like to clock in before you get to fight? Um, I would love to get like two more, three, two or three more fights before that happens. I think that's a good timeline. Um, of course. Hopefully I can get a few more fights right away this year. Um, I'm not injured and hopefully I don't, you know, go re-break anything and uh, have another year layoff. I definitely don't plan on doing that. So, uh, yeah, a few more wins, but of course, when my coaches say I'm ready, that's good. Hey, last for me, was it tough fighting for each of you? You know what she's been through. So in some sort of way, you, you want to wish her well, right? And you were very supportive throughout all this process. But at the same time, you have a job to do. That's, that's win. Yeah, you know, it's definitely when the cage door closes um, until you're punched in the face and someone's coming at you, everything else goes out the window. Of course, I'm going to wish her well and pray for her and her family. But, you know, it's a sport. We owe it to each other to put on the best performance that we can. Uh, I hope that I was able to do that for her and um, she's going to come back stronger from this. No, lastly for me, uh, did, did her just staying in the fight, did, she, did that inspire you in any way? Because I know uh, you mentioned like you've been through stuff as well and you mentioned in the book and here she is you know, still fighting for her dream and not letting no, it's definitely amazing, and I feel like I, I really hope that the UFC continues to put these people on platforms because it's some, she's somebody that 
people can look up to and girls can look up to, you know. A lot of people fight battles in the dark. It's unfortunate that people like her and myself, we have to fight our battles on a platform and a pedestal for the world to see. But we need to, um, you know, stand up tall and use it to inspire people. And I, I know that she's going to do that. Paige, you got married late last year. How does that change your preparation going into a fight or maybe your mentality and the nerves like right before fight night, especially with having your husband in your corner and all of that? Yeah, you know, it makes it so much better. It makes victory oh. so much sweeter, especially because I know I'm doing it for us. And sure. honestly, it makes me stay in the gym a lot more. If it wasn't for my husband, um, I probably wouldn't have been in the gym this entire year. Has getting married like reinvigorated your love for the sport and for MMA? Because, you know, you, you kind of have this whole family mentality of always being in the gym now with a fighter as your husband. Yeah, you know, we are. We're a close-knit family uh, and great, at Gracie Baja. And I feel like definitely having my husband, it helps that dynamic. Um, you know, it was a long, depressing road, having my arm broken twice. <laughs> yeah. And then even before that, only being able to fight once, you know. So it was, it was really defeating. But having him in my corner and telling me, you know, he knows how talented I am and keeping me at the gym this entire time and making sure I'm training and doing everything it takes. It's that one person that reminds you on rainy days how talented you are. So I, I feel like I need that. Do you guys have any separation or is it MMA all the time? Or is there every rule like <laughs> no talking MMA at the dinner table, enough uh, wrestling techniques while we're watching Netflix? No, it's pretty much MMA all the time. Really? Right? <laughs> Pretty much every day all the time. Yeah, he is one of my main, um, I wouldn't say training partners because obviously we're very different weight classes, um, but it's somebody that I can continue to talk to and say, hey, you saw me in the gym today, what do I need to work on? It's someone you can, you know, MMA, it's a full-time job and, um, you know, it, it re-inspires my love for it. Hey, we've been, uh, sorry, we've been canvassing fighters, uh, New Year's and title belt. What do you think of the design? It's awesome. You know, I actually haven't gotten to uh, really look at it. I was um, focused all week on my fight, but I think it's awesome. And I, I think as the UFC develops, developing these new belts, it just makes things way more exciting. Your demeanor is always positive. Uh, you know, whether you win or lose, you always keep a positive mentality. Uh, do you have any words in regards to um, your take in New York and how you felt about the energy here in Brooklyn? I know it's not the same as MSG, but you know, Brooklyn is... Um, no, I feel like this is definitely the same as MSG. If I didn't get New York, this was absolutely amazing. Um, I just felt such an energy walking out to the Octagon. Um, and most of my fans, actually, if you, you know, when I look at my insight on social media, most of my fans are from New York. So it was amazing to be able to fight here. This is mine and my husband's favorite city, you know. I wasn't able to enjoy it this week because I can't eat the pizza, but uh, now I can, so we're going to go get some pizza right now. Awesome. Where you go? I, where should I go? It's the artichoke. <laughs> Spumoni. No, Spumoni Garvins. It's okay. already closed. Yeah. Yeah. All right, oh, we're going to close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.